Good morning, and welcome to worship. My name is Tammy Yonke. I'm a parish ministry associate. I'm a member of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church on the south end of town, so I live here in Springfield. Um, and it is my honor to um, be leading worship for you this weekend, and I'll be back again um, next month. Um, so there are a few announcements in your bulletin. I hope you take a chance to read the messenger and look at all the awesome things that you have going on this week. I hope you'll participate in some of those. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes. I know David's got one. I want to urge you to come to a performance by the Springfield Board of Mid-America Singers. If you notice the poster on the door as you came in, we will be singing in this sanctuary along with the choir from the uh, Catholic, Catholic High School. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Three o'clock, parking is at a premium, so be careful. We have a shuttle coming from Mercy Hospital parking lot, should you be so inclined. That'll go back and forth for a while. Okay, three o'clock, come. It's going to be wonderful. Any other announcements? All right, then let us pray as we begin our worship. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the sunshine of the day. Thank you for bringing us together in this place. Thank you for the musicians who have prepared for this time. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit that we might hear your word for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise and sing.
Lord our God, we give thanks today for the witness of bold women. From the earliest times until today and on into the future, bold women show us all, show all of us how to live as God's beloved children and in God's beloved creation, carrying out our baptismal call to work for justice and peace for all God's creatures. For Eve, mother of us all, sinful and beloved, we say, Thank you. For Miriam, who danced beside the Red Sea, we say, Thank you. For Mary, mother of Jesus, who pondered the angel's words in her heart, we say, Thank you. For Mary Magdalene, first to hear the voice of the risen Christ, we say, for Naomi, who rejoiced in her grandson Obed, we say. For the Syrophoenician women, bold enough to challenge Jesus himself for her child's sake. For Mary and Martha of Bethany, who served the Lord together in their different ways, we say. For the persistent widow, who would not rest until she won justice, we say. For Catherine von Bora Luther, who ran to embrace change in her world, we say. There are bold women all around us on our way, if we only look for them. For whom do we thank the Lord today? Name her aloud and let us thank God for her witness. we say Thank you. for the witness of all bold women yesterday today and tomorrow lord our god we thank you and we praise you lord our god let their boldness flourish in our own heart as we live out our baptismal call to serve you and our neighbor with all our heart with all our mind with all our strength thank you lord Hallelujah. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, overflowing grace, forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us for passing by the ones in need. Forgive us for setting our hopes on fleeting treasures. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we say through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen.
gospel reading for today is from St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another. Are there any children today that would like to come join me up front? Oh, I've got some takers today. Yay. All right. So how many of you have brothers and sisters? And do you have a brother? You do. Okay. All right. So I have, I have two brothers. I'm the big sister, okay? So, so, and, and our names, my name is Tammy. Their names are Tim and Terry. So when my grandmother used to be, needed to yell for one of us, it was always Tim, Tim, Terry, all in one shot, always. Um, and, and with all the T's, that was, it was really hard. So have any of you ever, um, um, gotten mad at a brother or a sister? Yeah, I know. I Do you pick on them a little bit? Yeah, I know. I, I picked on my little brothers all the time, and they picked on me. Um, but, but we have to remember um, to forgive one another. We have to remember to say, I'm sorry sometimes, because we're not perfect. And sometimes we say things that we shouldn't have said, and sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do. 
and we take things that are not ours, right? Or we use things that are not ours. Your, your brothers and sisters don't like you for that, do they? Yeah, sometimes you get in trouble for that. So we're going we're gonna to hear a story a little bit later about a brother who, who um, his, his brothers thought that the dad was paying too much attention to the one brother. And moms and dads have really, really hard jobs, okay? Because they love each and every one of you so much, you'll never, ever know how much. But they only have so much time in every day. And so they're going to pay attention to you as equal as they can, but sometimes it doesn't feel equal. And sometimes you're going to think mom and dad have a favorite. They don't. They really don't. They love you so much, just like God loves each and every one of us and all of those people out there. He loves us so much, and he's always going to be there for us, just like your parents are always going to be there for you. So the lesson for today is, number one, you got to remember to say, I'm sorry, because sometimes we're going to mess up and we're going to say the wrong thing and we're going to do the wrong thing, and we just have to say, I'm sorry sometimes. And I have to do it even when I'm still the big sister, and I still have to do it. So you don't grow out of it either, um, but God's there to help us with all of that. So would you pray with me today? Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for coming to earth to live with us, to teach us. Thank you so much for loving us every day, for loving every single person in here our brothers, our sisters, our moms, our dads, and our grandparents, and everybody in this place, and everybody that we know and love. Thank you so much for this day, and thank you so much for these young people who are up here with me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up here. And now let us pray. Triune God, we know that where two or more are gathered in your name that you are present. Thank you for your presence today. And thank you for your presence as we read your word, here, at home, at the library, or in the coffee, ha coffee shop. Thank you for walking with us each and every day. Your presence gives us hope. Open our eyes and ears today to see and to hear you. Amen. So we stay now yet in the season of Epiphany. And we've heard many times in the last several weeks about the authority of Jesus. That Jesus was given the authority to read the word of God, to preach the word of God, to heal, to forgive, and to love everyone. Last week, Jesus stood on a level place to preach words of wisdom. Today, we just heard the second half of that sermon that he gave on the level place. I'll let you ponder today if preaching on a level place means anything. Previously, we heard that he has preached on the shore, in the synagogue, and from a boat. Today's lesson is all about hope and forgiveness. Hope and forgiveness as we live our lives as disciples. At the same time, both saints and sinners. We are imperfect people living in an imperfect world. As we begin our worship, we, we confessed our sins and we received God's abundant forgiveness. One of my daily prayers that I use is a short section where I ask God, what am I sorry for? And I think about all the things that I said, or maybe I didn't say, or things that I did, or that I didn't do, or I failed to do, and I ask God to forgive me for those things, because he's there to forgive on the other hand, he's not there to forgive and forget because 
reality is sometimes there are consequences for our actions, our words, or maybe our lack of action. But I believe that if we ask for God for forgiveness and we're truly aware of what we're sorry for, and God's there to forgive, then we are bound to become a better person. Not a perfect person, but a better person. I want to tell you about a story about Joseph, and this is in uh, the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. It's one of the readings for today as well, and it's a story about Joseph. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story about Joseph because it fits into this idea about forgiveness. Joseph was a young man with many, many brothers, 11 to be specific. Joseph was bright, he was curious, he's hardworking, and unfortunately, he appeared to be the favorite son of their father. And the brothers got jealous of Joseph. They even schemed ways of removing him from the family. One day, they got their chance. They sell him to some travelers. The brothers sell their brother. And they take his coat back to the father, and they claim that he's been killed by an animal. Think about the sadness that that father felt. Think about the sadness that Joseph felt. And how sad for his brothers. As the story is told by the brothers to the father, there's, there's really no one to forgive, no one to blame except for that animal that killed Joseph. Well, time passes, and there are two years with no rain, no crops, no food, and the people are starving, including Joseph's father and his brothers. Only in Egypt is there food because one man who had a dream that there would be no food, no crops, and no food stored up enough for everyone for the next seven years. Now the brothers traveled to Egypt to get food for their families because they know of this food, and especially to get food for their elderly father. And when they get in line to get the food, who's standing in line but their brother Joseph, and they don't even recognize him. Joseph says to them, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? The brothers are in shock. Can you imagine what's going through their heads? So is Joseph going to arrest them for being mean to him? But that's not how Joseph reacts. He introduces himself and he immediately asks about their father. And then he explains that God had a hand in all of this. God, it was, Joseph believes that it was God who sent him to Egypt to save the people from the famine. God had been with Joseph every step of the way. He was well cared for, he was fed, he was loved. He missed his dad a whole lot, but he was safe. Joseph believed that God had sent him there for a purpose, and he had forgiven his brothers a long time ago, although he'd never had the opportunity to tell them. This was his chance. He forgives them, and they break bread together. So what does that mean for us today? How, do we ever take the time to understand God's plan for us? Do we take the time to thank God for the life that we have? Do we forgive those who have pushed us into a path that we didn't think was even possible? As you heard the story, are you one of the brothers or are you Joseph today? Are you the forgiver or are you the forgiven? Because every day we have the chance to do both, right? Every day we have the opportunity to forgive others and to be forgiven. God, give us the strength to forgive and to be forgiven. Jesus said in our gospel lesson, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies 
Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If you watch the news, and I know most of you do, you know that the media mostly shows sensational stories that hook us in and get us all riled up. And now that we have 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week news, we can get pretty riled up all the time. Now, personally, I do not recommend 24-hour news stations because I don't think we need that much news. And I also don't recommend that you not pay any attention to the news. We're in a difficult time right now when it comes to trying to understand what we should watch and what we shouldn't. And yet we need to be informed citizens. We need to know what's happening so we can help our neighbor. But how do we learn the truth if we're bombarded with the story from one perspective? And we all have biases. All of us have biases. So getting an unbiased report is impossible because remember, we are not perfect. But how do we learn about our neighbors far and wide? How do we learn enough to forgive, to love? How do we learn enough to find out what their true needs are and their true beliefs? And how do we then attempt to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world today? How do we love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, bless those who curse us, and pray for those who abuse us? Is it possible that we might change the world? What if we all did love our enemies? What if we did forgive and pay it forward rather than hit back? And what if we modeled that for our children, our grandchildren, our friends, and our neighbors? Now, I know that each one of you have the power to change the world, and each one of you have done something. Each one of you have helped a friend. Each one of you have been the friend there for someone else. It takes one. It just takes one of us doing something. And we all have the power to do that. This year, Springfield Public Schools is giving out pins. And the pins say the power of one. And they hand those pins out to teachers and students and volunteers and community people, anyone who has made a difference in someone else's life because it only takes one. It takes each and every one of us to do something to make a difference and to be the power, to be the change in the world. We have that power, one step at a time, to do that. We have the power to say yes to the next challenge. Maybe it's volunteering. Maybe it's a job that takes us out of our comfort zone. We can challenge ourselves to try something new that allows us to learn, meet people we might not otherwise meet, and make a difference. So I thought I'd tell you one more thing about me. That is something that I like to do in my spare time. So coming up on Palm Sunday, which is not too many weeks away, there's a race. Um, And I'm I'm a runner. I love to run. I hate the first two miles, but you get me past those first two miles and I feel like I can run forever. I can't, I'm too old for that, but, but I run half marathons. And I, I, I try now um, to run one every year. So on Palm Sunday, the Go Girl Run is happening. And this year, Safe to Sleep, which is um, an organization that helps women who are homeless give them a safe place to sleep every night, is trying to, trying to form a team to raise awareness, to fundraise, and maybe to find a few more volunteers to help. So I signed up to be a member of the team. Well, team members can either run or walk, and they can run either a 5K or a half marathon. That day, I'm going to run my 10th half marathon. I didn't actually start running until my mid-40s when a health issue convinced me that I had to be more active. So I run one every year. This last year, I ran my half marathon in Missoula, Montana, while my son ran a full marathon. My family, including a brother, were at the finish line to cheer for us and support us after the race. 
Now, you don't have to run a half marathon, but you might consider what's that one cause that you can support? And are you really supporting them? And is there something you might do this week to help support them even more? Can we love just one? Can we forgive just one? We each have the power to turn off the hate. We each have the power to state our views without putting down those who do not believe the same as we do. Jesus, God's only son, died on the cross for our sins. We are forgiven and we are loved. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for sending hope, love, and peace into our world. Help us to use our power of one to show another the hope, love, and peace you have provided. Amen. and sing as we share our ties and offerings.
as one body in Christ. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Fill us with a spirit of generosity and care. Lead us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Show us new ways to be helpful to others. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, Grant seasonable weather for the planting and harvesting of crops. Protect farms, orchards, and gardens from damage. Bless those who till fields, those who care for livestock, and those who will provide food. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, for all researchers and leaders who work to resolve complex issues, for all who teach peace and reconciliation to communities in conflict, for those affected by earthquake, drought, or storms, and all who come to their aid, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, for those who lack adequate food, shelter, or access to medical care, for those unable to find gainful employment, heal the sick and comfort the grieving, especially Bethany Tyndall and Joey Herrera. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, inspire us to be good stewards of the resources you have entrusted to us. Teach us to give freely of ourselves and to offer our lives in service for women everywhere, that they may find their boldness to act boldly on their faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Carol and Callan. Even in the midst of death, give us faith to trust your promise of everlasting life. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, mighty and immortal, 
through Christ our Lord. In your Son, Christ Jesus, your eternal light has dawned upon our darkness, and by his death and resurrection, you reveal your glory to every nation. And so with the church on earth, with Simeon and Anna, and the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people. You promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and to draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts. And at the last, feast forever at the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on, a, on God's abundant life for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We thank you, O oh God, that you have fed us with, at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.
by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture you, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 